Jeff Fears on Hat Homestead. In today's video, we're going to talk wiring batteries in parallel and series. I get some questions about how I do it, what does it do for me, and all kinds of stuff. So I figured I'm no expert at this stuff. I kind of learned it as uh, through YouTube and talking with others and my own experience. So I figure I'll, I'll come up with a little video, a little slideshow, if you will, and kind of help um, you know help define it and show you how it's all done. So first off, on your wiring your batteries, you always wire battery series first. And I came up with this little this little acronym here that kind of helps me helps me when I try to wire up batteries is CIVO. And what CIVO is is series increase the volts opposite terminals, like negative to positive, positive to negative. So that that kind of helps me keep things straight as far as what series does and how to wire it. So in wiring series first, what I have here is a diagram of well, 4812 batteries. Now this could be for two batteries, it could be a hundred, it could be for whatever system you've got. I'm going to just take some six volt batteries, we're going to make 24 volts out of them, and I'm going to just parallel them together. So I got I'm going to call that first line series one, as you can see on the right hand side, and series two, and series three, etc. As you can see in this diagram, I'm wiring series first, positive to negative, positive to negative, and positive to negative. So in the center there, I've got those all connected with that line. And so by putting four six volt batteries together in series, it's going to give me 24 volts, right? Six times four. Hey, I had that right. There's your first set of batteries. You do the same thing with the second set and the third set. So now you have three series of batteries, all wired positive to negative, positive to negative, and that's going to increase your volts. So now just like any other battery out there, just like any battery has one positive and one negative. You know, you look at your AA batteries, your car battery, every battery just has one positive, one negative. So once you put four batteries together like this, it could be two batteries, it could be a hundred, whatever. But when you wire them up in series, those that are connected in the middle, those positive to negatives, those no longer are available terminals you can only have one positive one negative so on the left hand side those are the main negative terminals where the blue arrows are pointing and on the right hand side those are the main positive terminals to each series so you got your series one two and three and they need to be pretty much on opposite ends which kind of makes sense if you look at this diagram there now once you've got them all wired up in a series now you're going to wire them up in parallel so now you've increased your volts, now you, you need to increase your amps. So I came up with this one, PIAS, P-I-A-S, Parallel Increase Amps, same. So that's the same terminals, like positive, positive, negative, negative, this type of diagram here. I've taken the, the black is going to be your negative terminals, or your negative wiring, and your positive is going to be your red. Once you've connected up your parallel, your negative to negative, and your positive to positive, then now you have one large battery. So at each series, you had basically three negatives and three open or main positive terminals. But now once you connect all of them together, you can only have one main positive terminal and one main negative. They have to be on opposite ends. The reason what I've been told of being on opposite ends is it helps to keep the batteries charged more equally and it will help them in, um, when it comes time to equalize the, ba the batteries. And even when you're having your inverter on or you have a load um, connected to it, then it also helps in discharging the batteries more equally as well. That's why I've been told go opposite and opposite makes it perfect sense really when you start to look at it. Now you also have to ground your battery system and you ground just like a car does. You ground it off of your main negative terminal. So off your main negative terminal that's where you're going to connect your, your ground to. And you're just going to ground that to 
a bus bar with all your other grounds and into um, your your earth ground, which is just a cop a, a rod in the uh, ground there. And I'm not going to get into that. I did a video about grounding, so you can catch that video. So now this is the same thing, except your main negative terminal and your main positive terminal is now on, on they've been flipped. Instead of in the lower left corner for your main terminal, it's now in the upper left corner. And your positive went from the upper right corner to the lower left or the lower right corner. They still have to be on opposite ends. So what I'm saying here is it doesn't matter which way you go as long as they're opposite terminals. Um, so whichever you're most comfortable with on, on the way that that stuff lines up. Now to connect up your batteries, there is actually two different ways to connect them up in parallel, believe it or not. You actually have this way, which is kind of your traditional way, and that is negative to negative, right? That's what parallel is. But what's interesting about this type of diagram here is if you notice on the center group of batteries, the, the main negative has two black lines connected to it. Same thing with a positive. And then you have in the lower left corner, you have three black lines connected to it. Plus you have, you, you have to have a ground connected. So you got four on that one. And in the upper right hand corner, you have your main positive terminal. And that's got three of them. Now what makes this difficult really is these connectors, these terminals, sometimes it's difficult to connect three or four of these large cables to it. And you want to use on these cabling, you want to use a very large cable. You want to use like a four odd cable, welding cable or something to that nature. The larger the wire you use to connect up these batteries, the better because, and I'm not going to get into the details, but it has something to do with loss in, in voltage uh, and it also has something to do with with a more equal charge and a more equal discharge and a more equal way of, of equalizing the batteries. So the larger the cable, the better that will happen, if you will. Then you have this type of deal, and which is what I was showing earlier. Now this uses in the upper right hand corner, I talked about a large bus bar. And basically, no, we're not talking like the small standard bus bars um, that a lot of electrical boxes have, but you need a large one because you're connecting large four rod cable. So it has to handle that large, that large connector. And so you may have to make one. I don't know if they have them available. I did not wire mine up this way. I wired mine up in the, in the diagram that was before this, but this is a really good way. This is actually a better way to wire up your batteries than the diagram I showed you previously. But in this system here, you're using a large bus bar and you're just connecting everything to it. And again, you're using as large of cable as possible between everything. So that kind of basically explains your your wiring of your series in parallel. Again, series is going to increase your voltage with, with opposite terminals, CIVO, and PIAS is going to be parallel, increase your amps, same terminals, and you always want to do series first. Now, now there's this other question, and I'm not going to go into great detail, is, is what about fuses and breakers and switches and things? Well, when you add into your battery some switches or breakers or fuses, it's actually a really good idea. You kind of want to have a switch and a breaker for the mo depending on how you look at it, they're one and the same. Because a breaker, when it reaches up to the amperage of the breaker, it will flip the breaker. Just like in a standard house uh, distribution box, you have breaker, it's a breaker box in a sense. And when too much amps are, are flowing through there, it triggers that breaker and it turns it off. And it's designed to protect the components after that. I can I can use that as a switch because all I do is just turn the breaker off or on. So if you need to maintain your batteries for any reason, that is a good way to put a breaker between your charge controller and the the um, cabling that's going to your batteries. And you put it really anywhere in there, uh, whatever's convenient, 
and then that way you always put them on a positive side and that way you've got that breaker that you can gives you a little bit more control over your system you can put the regular switch in there which is fine um, you just don't have that breaker so if you ended up with like some kind of surge or something from your charge controller because it's freaking out or whatever the breaker just helps protect your batteries a little bit you can use either one and now between your batteries and your inverter or your loads or however way you have that part done up you want to have at least a fuse if not another breaker uh, for an example my inverter came with a fuse well it didn't come with a fuse it recommended a specific fuse that I also bought now you want to read the, in, the installation instructions for that because it tells you on my inverter to actually attach that fuse to the battery's main positive terminal the same one that you connect your your cabling to that goes to your inverter and then there's some that will say no it's okay to put it somewhere in line and then there's some that say it's okay to attach it to the inverters um, connection make sure you follow whatever instructions that comes with your inverter for that um, the fuse is great it acts like a breaker the only problem is with a fuse once it blows you got to replace the fuse a breaker is a great because once that goes you can just flip it back on so if you have some kind of surge in power that's where that would come in and a lot of times it's great between that main positive terminal and the inverter or the loads that having that in there because if for any reason that inverter is acting up it freaks out and it's trying to send power back to the batteries but the charge controller is also doing it then this also helps out that that whole situation because now maybe the fuse or the breaker will will trigger and it just helps protect your batteries um, but that's that's a skinny on how to do your uh, how to wire up batteries between your um, for parallel and series and uh, you always do the series first and that is series increased volts for opposite terminals and parallel increase the amps same terminals so um, I don't know if you have any other questions, put it down below. And again, my disclosure is I am no expert at anything. And uh, the information that I I put together on this is stuff I got from, from other people, um, from my own experience, and also what I've learned from the, the whole interweb. So, um, hope that helps you. Uh, and guess I'll see you guys on the next video.